Hello again. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Hello again, guys, and thanks for joining me for another video. Today I want to talk about taxes. So something that happens a lot whenever we get... It doesn't even seem to matter anymore who changes hands for power to who. Except for Trump, our taxes always seem to go up. Because they're always spending money that they don't have. <laughs> So, or we get a new tax on something or, you know, either they either go up or we get new ones or they reconfigure old ones or something like that. So personally, I'm tired of paying so much tax. You know, if you think about the Boston Tea Party, they were upset about like a one or 2% tax. If you look at all the taxes you pay from sales tax to the taxes that they take out of your just directly out of your check to the state tax, you pay probably 50% of your money out to the government. Now, I've heard people say, well, you get stuff for that. Well, not always. <laughs> okay. Um, a lot of times there other people get stuff for that, but you go to use those same support systems and you're told no, because you make too much money. <laughs> it's like, then why am I paying into these things? I just don't understand. But anyway, so I took a little trip through the Bible. It's a very small one, okay? So this is not everything that I'm sure that the Bible says about taxes. And if you know of a verse, then, you know, leave it down in the comments and let me know what it is. But this is the one that I read right here, Matthew 17, 24 through 27, that made me really think about it. It says, when Jesus arrived in Capernaum, the collectors for the temple tax came to Peter and asked, does your teacher pay the temple tax? And yes, he does, Peter answered. After they had returned home, Jesus went up to Peter and asked him, Simon, what do you think? Do the kings of, oh no, what is this? Oh, just on my computer. Sorry. Do the kings of this earth collect taxes and fees from their own people or from foreigners? Peter answered, from foreigners. Jesus replied, then their own people don't have to pay, but we don't want to cause trouble. So go cast a line into the lake and pull out the first fish you hook. Open its mouth and you will find a coin. Use it to pay your taxes and mine. So they're paying a temple tax, which is something that was set up in the Old Testament, um, had to do with the whole um, how you attain forgiveness in the Old Testament um, and how the temple was supported. So you had the tax and you also had the animals. Whoops. So in that case, so in this case, it is weird then that foreigners should pay it and not the people because in the old testament it was the people that paid it and not foreigners so you can see in the new testament how whatever was set up in the old testament gets twisted and gets changed and it isn't the same thing that was laid down the meanings are lost and not even like cared for at all so um as when jesus comes he renews a lot of that he says no no this is not what this means it means this so whenever I'm looking at this, I'm going, okay, temple tax, don't know what that would be, you know, the same for us, because this is not the same as a tithe. You don't pay a tithe to make sure we have a building. That's not really what tithing is for. Um, you don't tithe to make sure that, you know, uh, you're not causing trouble. That's not what it's for. You don't pay a tithe as a tax. It's not what it's for. So I just look at this and go, okay, this is not something that even happens anymore. And even though, but what I take from it and other parts in the Bible where it talks about taxes is that even though the taxes could be wrong or are wrong, the taxes are not something that people who, you know, live in the area are supposed to pay because it says right there from foreigners. In my Bible, what really got me on this is right here where it says, Jesus replied, then their own people don't have to pay. What it really says is, then the sons are free. And that has a dual meaning here. I guess even here it does have a dual meaning. This whole reply from Jesus and what he does. Because 
even though taxes drive me crazy. Like I like some of the things I get from taxes, but I don't see why I have to pay as much tax as I do to get some of those things like roads and fire and you know, all of that stuff. The, the, Oh no, what's it called? I just had a brain fart. Anyway, when you call 911, they come and they help you. All of that's provided by taxes and I'm fine with that. But here he's like, even if the tax is heavy, even if the tax is something that you shouldn't pay because you're not a foreigner, you're a son or you're the people, just pay it just to not cause trouble. And not only that, I'll provide you with money to pay it. And we actually had this happen in our own lives, which I think is hilarious. So the way that we did when we bought our home, we ended up with a, t what was it like? $2,300 tax bill. And so when the stimulus package came in here recently, even though I am against that and I would be just fine not having it, we ended up using that money. So the tax money that we're getting back, cause that's how they get that money to then turn around and pay the taxes. So even though the coin didn't come out of a fish's mouth, it came from the government. Excuse me. It ended up that we just paid the government back with their own money and we didn't have to use any of ours to pay it. Okay. So this is what I think is so cool about this is even if we're saying that the taxes are much and the taxes are high, God provides a way for you to pay them so that you are living a life where, how do I say this? Okay. So it's not, so you're living a substantial life. It's not that it's Jesus wants us to go through life and just pay the taxes of these people. Cause it's just money. He will give you money. Are they requiring your time? Go use the time and talk about God. Are they requiring of you like Daniel and Daniel in the lion's den? Are they requiring of you that you do this weird thing? Then do what God says. As soon as it's against what God says to do, you don't have to do it. But otherwise, just do it and get along. He says in verse 27, but we don't want to cause trouble. So go cast the line to the lake and pull out the first fish you hook. All right. As long as we, it almost seems like some of the parts of the Bible say, you need to get along so that you can put the Bible out there and you have time or you have the ability to do so because you pay your taxes. You're a good citizen. People are more willing to listen to you. Now, I don't know if that is really what it's saying, but it seems like it is. There are parts in the Bible where to be a citizen or to be a bad citizen, quote unquote, bad citizen is the thing to do. Daniel in the lion's den again. I just love that because for me, it's like a very good template where he doesn't pray to the king. He continues to pray to God. He gets this consequence of not praying to the king, which is thrown into the lion's den. And God comes down and says, okay, lions, or he sends an angel. Actually, the angel sits in there with him and protects him from the lions. What that did was not only did the king initially feel bad because he's throwing a very good man, worker, et cetera, into there, into that pit. But then when this very good man comes out, the king says, oh, we will worship your God now. And I think that's kind of along the lines of what he's trying to get us to do. Sometimes in my zeal to be free, I really don't want a whole lot of taxes. I believe that the government, small government is proven out in the Bible. So that's what I want. So I don't want a whole lot of that is, uh, sometimes my zeal for that can overcome just sort of common sense. Sometimes I think God is trying to say, just have common sense. If you're living here, pay the tax. It says somewhere else in the Bible, um, render unto Caesar, what's Caesar and unto God, what is God's. So if I'm giving my life to God and he says, just give the taxes to Caesar, whatever he's asking for, just give it to him. Then that's what I should do. Um, when it comes to other things, you see this also in the Bible where it says, if one man, if a man forces you to go with him one mile walk too, if he needs a coat, give him a second. If he needs a shirt, give him a coat as well. You know, go above and beyond, be the loving 
be what God is for you, which is God goes above and beyond. He doesn't just say, he doesn't just say, well, do the best you can. He says, I'm here to help you do exactly what I have I always ask you to do. So, uh, that is where I'm at with this right now. It was kind of convicting because <laughs> I hate taxes. Like I said, well, I hate high taxes. I don't mind a small amount of tax, but you know, like I said, it's like 50% of our check. If you, if you did all of it together, just, it goes out to the government. And I think that means the government's too big. But Christ is saying, don't worry about it. I've got your back. He can always increase the amount I get. He can always make it so that the taxes aren't huge. He can do what, he, there are tons of ways he can support me in doing what's right. So I'm just going to, you know, pay my taxes <laughs> because that's what he says to do. And for me, it's like, I'm doing this because God says so. As soon as I see any inkling at all where God's like, well, maybe not this time, mm, that's, where I, <laughs> that's where I'm leaving. So a lot of my life before the Bible, I didn't really have any, I had no respect for the law, for people. I could not care less. But after coming to know Christ, I have, I have more. Okay. So that's just what I wanted to cover today. This is what I mean, meant by we're going to go over taxes. <laughs> It, taxes are not really like this great thing that people love to talk about. It's like, oh, I love my taxes. Nobody loves taxes. Even here in the Bible, did they love taxes? And there are two kinds of taxes in the Bible. One's a temple tax, which is what this is talking about right here. And then another one is the tax that you would pay to Caesar. And that's why he says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. Okay, so... I'm not too worried about it anymore. I know God will always provide to provide money. He always has. He's had money just show up in my bank account. He's had money just somebody walk up some money to me. There's one time I was sitting in my car and nobody knew I was almost out of gas. I did not tell anyone. It was not odd for me to sit in my car for a minute while I'm, you know, thinking about my path to drive. So I wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary. I just gotten out of helping with the youth of the church at the time. And a lady walks out and says, here, God told me to give you this. Now before, she, and it was a $20 bill. Now before she had done this, I had prayed. I was like, look, God, I'm here doing what you told me to do. Uh, I need gas. I've got to be able to go pick up my husband. I've got to be able to do all this stuff. And I'm almost out. And so then I waited. I just waited to see what he would do. I didn't know if he was just going to miraculously put gas in my car, just make it work anyway. I didn't know what he was going to do. And that's when the lady walked out and gave me $20 and said, here, God told me you needed this. And I said, thank you very much. I do actually need this for gas. And so that gave me enough money to last the week, basically. And, you know, thankfully we got paid in like two or three days, two days later. So I had even extra on top of that. So God always does provide. There's no way that lady could have known because like I said, I didn't tell anybody that I was short on gas. I was not doing anything out of the ordinary. I left at the same time I always leave. I didn't make a huge scene or anything like that. And he provided. So I, that is something I, I will always remember because it's not something people can't point to something that I did or didn't do and say, well, they knew because of that. There's no possible way they could have known. I did not indicate it. I did not speak to anyone about it. There's no way anybody knew anything. You know, I did not go the previous week and talk about how, you know, yeah, we're short on cash. None of that. This is just a lady who listened to God and provided for me. So I, I will always be grateful for that. I will always remember that as a, as a way that God provided for us. Another way that he did it was my husband needed shoes. We didn't have the money. His shoes are about $50 and it lasts him about a year. So that's not bad. Eight months, something like that. And so I was like, God, we don't have the money for this. And my husband needs this. Um, I looked into our bank account. We have 50 extra dollars more than we should have that we did not have five minutes ago. And it wasn't like the bank then did an audit later and we had $50. You know, they found that the $50 was a mistake. It was just there. So he was able to buy shoes when, you know, previously we would not, we would not have been able to otherwise. And at the time we weren't making a whole lot of money. We are making more money now, 
but we weren't making a whole lot before. So <clears throat> these are just things that the Bible talks about as far as you with your money, don't be stingy with it, pay it out to who it belongs to, and God will give it to you when you need it. And he has, there's at least two instances there, and I'm sure there's more. I've opened up my wallet before where there was no money, excuse me, when there was no money and there was $20 there. And I know there was no money in it before and boom, there's 20 bucks. So money is not a thing that we as Christians should really worry about. God can literally provide it whenever we need it. As long as we're doing, you know, as long as we're following our steps, as long as we're doing what we're supposed to do, money will come. So I'm not too worried about that as I am anymore. I do, like I said, I still have myself who wants to be free. You know, when I buy, when I purchase something, so we have, you know, property tax as well. But if I have property tax, the government can take my, 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 blah, blah, blah. the government can take my property if I don't pay my tax. So I never really own it. I always have to, it's like I'm leasing it from the government or something because I always have to pay that tax. You know, I would be totally for getting rid of that. The thing I love about America is that we can decide to do that. We can just decide, oh, hey, Caesar doesn't get to have this anymore just by voting and making our voices heard. So... That's it for today, guys. I actually went a little longer than I thought I was going to, but what do you think about what the Bible says about taxes? What do you think about what I said? Do you agree, disagree? Let's have a wonderful conversation down in the comments. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!